Howdy, how is everyone doing? Are you ready to cook on this lovely day? I hope so, because cooking is always fun. So this week, we're going to learn something special. We're going to learn how to use a splayed saute pan. And many of you may have that pan. A lot of time people want to know what on earth should I do with this one? Now this is the top-notch model, professional version, copper, and this is splayed, and it's not straight edges, it goes like that. And I'm going to explain how to use it and how we can make a recipe solely with that pan. So the recipe, of course, and that suited for this is a saute, because that's a saute pan, so you have to make a saute dish. So what we're going to do, the saute of lamb, chasseur, which is based on the same recipe that we've done before quite some time ago with the hunter's chicken, except that home cooks in France have readapted the recipe in a simplest version using diced lamb. And instead of cognac, white wine, okay? But I've got a copper pan here, but you don't have to have that. You can have a stainless steel of worst case scenario. You can even use just a saucepan. <music> Now, the ingredients are the same, always the, the sauce chasseur, huh? you're going to have some brown stock, mushrooms, of course, the tarragon, very important, some thyme and bay leaf, shallots, and a little bit of tomato paste, that's it. And then we've got the diced lamb. All the ingredients will be listed in the video description. Instead of the cognac, we're using a no-frill uh, cooking wine, okay? That's all what we need. And let's look at this famous splayed sauté pan for a sec. So here are the splayed saute pan. A lot of you have been asking, can you explain how to use your cookware? What's the difference? How should I use these? Okay, splayed saute pan, you've got two versions. Huh? You've got this kind of conical version with the edge going straight like this, and you get the rounded splayed saute pan, also called the saucier pan. And the round version is good for whisking in there when you're making a sauce. And this can be also used for a sauce because, of course, this wide opening at the top favorizes the evaporation of liquid. And this was used for sauces, huh? so you can reduce very quickly. There's different materials. As you can see, this is the stainless steel one, and that's the copper one. This is very easy to use, but if we look at this one, which is the one I'm going to be using, you always have a problem with maintenance. They're beautiful pans, but there's a lot of maintenance that needs to happen. Let me show you. So you see copper pans are beautiful and they're a good statement piece, but there's a lot of marks. You see, look how it gets. When you start using it, it doesn't even look like copper anymore. So from time to time you have to clean it. And that's a good time to call for a special old grand matrix coming up. Ah, the good old old matrix, huh? they, they always uh, really fascinate me. You know, grandma was coming, hey son, I'm gonna show you how to clean your pan. And uh, the, the funny thing is that it, it looks like cooking when you do something, and it works. <laughs> That's the most amazing. So use a bowl. I'm gonna, just going to make uh, a little bit. And what I'm going to do here, it's called la pâte à cuivre, huh? the copper batter. One or two tablespoons of flour. Okay. And then I'm going to add maybe about a tablespoon of rock salt. Okay, it's like cooking, really. And then we're going to top this up with some white, you know, really cheap white vinegar. So you can go to a free spoon. The whole thing we need to have here is to mix in a vinegar until we have a kind of a semi-liquid paste. So as you can see here, so that three, I'm telling you, live. so three, four, five, maybe a bit more, up. And I'm gonna make my little potion. Now just for the fun, I think I'm gonna use a little whisk. So you're basically making your little paste and that's what we're going to be using to clean. Okay, done. That's it. All right, so let's try this out. I'm moving to the sink because it might get a little bit messy, but you can see how dirty that thing is. Uh, so all it is, you take that thing and you're basically just going to put it everywhere. And look, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Look at this. So usually you have to leave it for like 10 minutes across, but I'm just going to do a little wish-wash, come like this, up, 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 and this, this grind mass, and you see, so just like, as you can see, it's been what, not, not even a minute, take a sponge, so you see, that's a little trick, so I'm going to clean my pan, and then we start the recipe, okay, hold on, look at my pan, how oh, beautiful, anyway, we start on the stove here, we're going to use the saute pan, diced lamp, 
salt and pepper. Now, a word about the diced lamb. I went to the butcher, okay, and this is what I got. I always find the pieces are very small, eh? so be careful. So the cooking time, we have to be very careful, maybe 15, 20 minutes. Well, sometimes bigger chunk might take, you know, more like 25, 30 minutes, eh? so keep this in mind. All right, the most important in this recipe is really the searing. So high heat, under your pan, we're gonna wait and add, you know, just a little bit of oil, like a bit more than a teaspoon, nothing more. And we're gonna have to brown the meat really well in order to really have that nice brown roasted effect in our sauce. That is gonna be really important. All right, so the saute pan, when you we use it, why? Because, now it should be after three, four minutes, to the right temperature. Because you can start like this, and you're sauteing ingredients to start with. Okay, that's the first thing you can do with these pans. It's not just to boil water or make sauces. All right, so the particularity of these pans, these professional, they're very thick, and it takes a bit of time to get to temperature, but it really allows the meat, you see, to get this kind of nice brown crust. And for each piece, so that took me about three minutes, a bit more, you really want to have this crust to release all the flavoring. All right, so my first batch is done. I'm gonna remove the meat and put my second batch, but you can see already, you see the particularity of these copper pans. They don't stick, and you really get this nice layer of flavoring that you want to have. That's the key, right here. My lamb is done, everything is drying. If there's not enough fat, again, a teaspoon of oil. And all what we're gonna do here to get all this taste is to put the shallots in. So the shallots, just thinly sliced, nothing special. On a good medium to high heat, and just for 20, 30 seconds maximum. And we don't want to burn it. Okay, so the natural water contained in the shallot starts to come out. I'm gonna add a few tablespoons of white wine. And we're gonna deglaze the whole lot. Reduce your heat a little bit and gently, you don't need to rush it. And we're gonna get that base of stock. You can see the color and get and detach all of the caramelized juices. Now while the wine is reducing very slowly, the stock, remember, you always bring it to the boil and you have to thicken it. So a teaspoon of Bermanier, equal amount of butter and flour, so like one teaspoon of flour, one teaspoon of butter, and you whisk. And that is gonna thicken our stock, which is necessary for our sauce to be pre-thickened, all right? Looking good, so this is almost dry, and yeah? we've really killed the acidity. I'm just gonna add half of my lamb first, and we're gonna mix it with our tomato paste. And we're gonna add a good teaspoon, now you could maybe up to a tablespoon, depending on how tomato you want it. Okay, make sure the heat is on medium-high. And same thing here, we're gonna cook that tomato paste. So again, you can see one of the small details, I don't have a soup right here, that's important. And what you don't want is ending already with some kind of tomato sauce and things start uh, to boil. Eh? So with a nice high heat, keep things dry. So we can cook and kill the acidity of that tomato paste a bit, so just for a minute or so. It's now time to add the stock, so always filter your stock. Eh? Okay, to just about cover your meat. If you don't have enough, you can add more stock and you can also just use more wine or water. It's up to you. Looking good, my boy is back. I'm gonna add, be very careful with the salt, a little bit of salt and pepper for the seasoning. You'd rather do this at the end, if you're not sure. Okay, a little piece of bay leaf on here. And I'm gonna use some of this thyme, but I think I'm gonna, just gonna pluck it and bit by bit rather than put all the branches in. Okay, just to add a little extra flavoring. Mix well. And now this is where, again, the saute pan comes into play. Because now that we've sauteed the meat, as you can see, now it transforms uh, into some kind of little uh, mini stock pot. Uh, where I can make a ragu, so now I'm gonna cook my lamb like this in the sauce without having to get another pan or anything like this. And because of this size, it's gonna evaporate nicely. Uh, so I'm gonna keep a lid on with a little bit open on the side and wait until this is almost cooked. So here the pieces are small. If you have larger pieces, be careful, time will vary anywhere between 15 
to up to 30 minutes. Uh, so it's up to you to kind of have a look. In the meantime, we're gonna saute some mushroom. So the mushroom, nothing special. Huh? Pan fry, golden color, and now we're gonna add them to the meat. Is it me or that kind of <laughs> scene here with the copper pan and the, the sauce boiling away with the meat? <laughs> it's kind of an iconic thing, you know, when you think French food. Oh my God, it's, it's kind of strange. So 15 minutes, uh, let's look at the, the lamb here. Mm, you see? Very tough to cook, Joanne. No, nah. no, nah, no, nah, nah. way too, I can feel, you know, it's still very bouncy. So that's perfect. We're just gonna add some saute mushroom in there. And there's a little voice that tells me, add the crushed garlic. <laughs> it's actually not in the recipe, but honestly, I don't know why. There's that kind of thing telling me you need to add a crushed garlic. So I'm gonna listen to myself, or whoever it is in my head. Um, and then mix that in and we're going to continue to cook until it's, uh, it's go. So 15, now we're going to go to 20, maybe 25 from the state of things uh, until it's, it's ready. Oh, it's been 25 minutes in and only now, I think for me, it starts to look like I like. So it starts to shine. Now you see if you cover the, the pieces of meat with the sauce, it shines. This is a good sign. It's time to put the herbs in. So very last step. There's a good tablespoon of chopped tarragon and a hint of parsley. You can use chervil as well if you wish. And that is, of course, going to boost all of the flavor. You can put more if you want. It's really up to you, but we can add at the end a little bit more. So I think I'm just going to continue another five minutes. So let's say, you know, for you at home, I think count roughly as a ballpark, 30 minutes, more or less cooking time. Huh? Uh, doing that technique in that kind of professional saute pan, which is really, really interesting. Now, of course, let me try this. <laughs> That's ease. I love that job for this. You see, when you make, <laughs> if you work in a restaurant, I think tasting is the best part. Wow, the tarragon. The tarragon makes it. But I think, you know what? If you can afford it, or if you have the bottle, add a dash of cognac. I'm just going to do it, but it's optional. Mm -hmm. My favorite. Well, not too much. Up, mix it in. Okay. Wow, look at this. No, look at this sauce. Beautiful. Ah, yeah. And that transforms everything. And that, and that complexity of the cognac and that sweetness. Right? It breaks through the, the tomato sauce. Absolutely lovely. Well, it's almost done. And just four or five minutes cooking, and we'll be tasting and serving. All right. So. Let's do a little of a test there. Okay, now, ooh, a bit of more sauce. Oh, that's too many mushrooms. Let's try that. All right, the color is good. Meat is cooked, but still a bit tough. Mmm. And that sauce never, never gets old. But still, I think it is the tarragon and the cognac that really makes, the mushroom is nice, but mm, the tarragon and the cognac, that's the key to that sauce, I'm telling you. And that's it everyone, the video is over and I hope now you've got a better idea on how to use these professional saute pans and what can be done with them. I think for me the experience is quite interesting to work with copper and to see how the, the simmering process works, the browning. I think the control of the temperature is really great. I think that's one of the plus of these types of pan. You've you got really this control, but it kind of takes time to cook things. But the result really is really, really good. And of course, that uh, lamb saute chasseur is extremely, extremely tasty. But that's it for me. As well, if you have any question about the video, use the comment section. Uh, if you want to make the recipe and share your picture, always Instagram, hashtag French Cook Academy. Follow me on Facebook, Patreon. And if you're interested, join our cooking school online where you can learn all the tricks of French cooking. I'll see you all next time for a delicious French recipe. Take care. Bye-bye.